Hi everyone, and welcome back to today's Tech Talk. I'm happy to be welcoming Ben again from Sandvik Coromant, and we're going to be focusing on finishing strategies using Sandvik Coromant's Plura Ball Nose End Mills. So we've got our part behind us. It's quite a nice complex shape. Um, what do we do with the tools? I'm guessing we can't just put a ball nose in and hope for the best. No, that's certainly right. But one thing that we need to clarify first is, you know, what strategy we're going to be using. And then we can start to look at what we're going to do with the, the tool itself. So I'm going to have to uh, hand it back to okay, you. Okay, straight right? back to me there. That's fun. So, right. Um, finishing on this part, other than those eight flats on those feet, the whole part is curved. So I'm going to have to look at the strategy to use. And they're not only curved, there's some steep regions where the angle is above 30 degrees and there's some shallow regions where it's below 30 degrees. And this really lends itself to a strategy that we've got called steep and shallow. And what that does is combines two types of strategies for those two types of regions. Because in some regions, we think about step over as we step over the part. However, if the part's really steep, a step over can mean a huge step down. So that's why we need those two, two ways we separate the parts, two strategies to look at it, and then how we actually combine that into one. We also have some really nice features in there with superior tool axis control. We can also do things like removing the cusps, which I'll definitely be showing you some tips on that later. So we can do tool axis control. What would you recommend? So I know a little bit about not cutting on the tip, but I'm not quite sure why I do that. I was just told it wasn't good practice. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it, it's, we call it the, the push and pull method, okay? So what we want to be doing is engaging on the radius as much as we can. Okay, so if we were starting from, you know, the bottom and working up the material, obviously that's working on the radius. If we're starting from the top and working down and cutting into the material, that means that we're working on the bottom of the tool. And we spoke about, you know, VC before our RPM, the closer or smaller diameter we get, and then if we get to the center point, basically that VC, that RPM is zero. Oh, wow. Okay, so, you know, if we're doing that method, we're gonna see, you know, possibly a catastrophic failure of the, the tool on the center point. We'd also see a, a, a effect on the surface finish as well. So we see a, a worse surface finish if we're cutting on that area. So we wanna be staying engaged in that radius to get a better surface finish with the tool. Perfect, so when, when, we're, when we're pulling through the material, we're sort of keeping the tip away from where the work's happening. Absolutely. We're using that radius. We're using the cutting edge uh, at its optimum area around that radius. Yeah. The other thing is as well, you know, we talk about tool selection and, and we're looking at surface finish with something like this. We need to make sure that we've got the shortest tool possible, the shortest uh, build-up possible as well. Okay. So, you know, that's really important that we've got that so because we've got that stability in the tool uh, that's then going to give us the better chance of a surface finish that we want on the finished part. Yeah, because I still find it hard to believe that carbide deflects. You know, you, you, you hold it, you feel it, you don't think it's going to deflect, but it really does. So It does. So, yeah. you know, these are really good things that we've got to take into account and ensure that we've got the right setup to get the best out of the, the uh, strategy that we're looking at. And I suppose that's for us then as the programmers and the machinists to try and balance length versus, you know, tool axis limits. Because yes, we can, it's a five axis machine, we can manipulate the machine to avoid collisions, but we'll get to a point where we'll hit limits or you know, or we might avoid the collision with the tool, but then have a spindle nose to table collision. So it's about balancing, I suppose, the deflection we're willing to get, because there's always going to be a degree of deflection. Yeah. So balancing that within the machine limits and, and the other parameters around there as well. Absolutely. You know, finishing is a tricky operation when we're looking at ball nose. So it's making sure we get all these different elements correct so that we get the surface finish that we require. Yeah, absolutely perfect. Because again, uh, the ball nose, as the name suggests, is a completely round ball. But we can also look at this with, you know, radius end mills, can't we? And we can use the same techniques. Yeah, we can use similar techniques, you know, with a, a radius end mill, we can utilize the radius on the outer corners and, and do a, a, you know, a similar operation with that. Perfect. Well, I think it's time for us to both jump into fusion and really see how we apply all of that into an actual strategy. Definitely, sounds good. Perfect, let's go. When choosing finishing strategies on our part, the holder can be just as influential as the tool itself. Using the Coro Plus tool library, we can create a full assembly of our tool and our holder right back to the spindle nose. Not only receiving the recommended cutting data from the tool library, but also the recommended stick out length for a given tool. For the finishing strategy on this part, I'll be using our steep and shallow toolpath. 
the steep and shallow toolpath not only allows finite control of the type of toolpath to be used across the slope of the component, but also with its enhanced tool axis control, we can keep the material away from the center of the tool and ensure the holder does not collide with the part. We can get the recommendation from the Sanvik Coro Plus tool library. Here we can choose the type of operation we'll be performing, provide some further details on the type of cut, and choose a tool from the recommendation list. Now we can see the cutting data and recommended cutting parameters for this given tool. We can build this cutting tool into its full assembly. Choosing the collet, our Corochuk 930 holder, and finally the adapter to our machine tool spindle nose. We can see now not only the full assembly, but we have a calculated stick out length or length below the holder, taking the guesswork out of such a critical attribute of this tool assembly. We will use our steep and shallow strategy for the finishing toolpaths. Steep and shallow looks at the geometry as a whole and ensures the correct type of toolpath is applied to the different regions of our part. As the slope of a surface changes, we need to consider how to machine this. With steep regions on our part, we calculate in step down, and with shallow regions, we calculate in step over. Our threshold angle is how we control what is defined as steep or shallow. Try to choose a threshold angle that does not force a change from steep to shallow along the same surface. As though the surface finish can still be correct to specifications, you will actually see the difference in machining techniques in the finish of the part. Looking at our component, a threshold of 30 degrees will ensure the main central area is completed with one strategy. Finishing operations are all about controlling the tool to reduce the potential marks left on the surface. Every time the tool makes a turn or leaves the part and re-engages, we create a risk of a mark that will be seen on the finished product. Steep and shallow is not just about creating two toolpaths across our part, we focus and provide control on how these two toolpaths interlink with one another. The overlap distance can ensure there's not a cusp left behind where we directly transition from the steep to the shallow. Looking at the strategy itself for the main shallow region, using a parallel strategy here will result in fewer changes of direction on the surface compared to our scallop strategy. This will change depending on part geometry. For example, the top of this component will benefit from the scallop over the parallel allowing control over the fine details such as strategy type, wall clearance, and removal of cusps. This would reduce the time needed for post-process finishing operations. We also provide options to apply smoothing control to the NC program by fitting arcs or evenly spacing the points across the toolpath. Utilizing tool axis control, we can set a preferred lead angle, improving the surface finish by cutting higher up the tool and keeping the cutter away from the center. This reduces buildup that can form on the tool center, prolonging tool life. Just because we could machine this part with a 45 degree lead angle doesn't mean we should. Like many machining strategies, this becomes a balancing act between various considerations. Although a 45 degree lead angle would ensure the most efficient proportion of the tool was used for cutting, this would greatly increase the risk of collisions forcing additional rotational movement of the machine to then avoid these. Applying automatic collision avoidance will use the rotary axes we have available to keep the tool in contact with the part while ensuring the tool and holder do not collide with our model. The ability to limit the tool axis here gives you control over the maximum tilt angles used during the collision avoidance. On machines like ours where the table can get close to the spindle shroud, this parameter lets you specify the maximum tilt angle, not only removing the need for multiple setups with various tool axes, but removing marks that can be seen on the surface where the toolpaths overlap at different angles. Steep and shallow with its finite strategy control and additional tool axis preferences gives you the control you need over finishing your complex feature rich components. Well, that was a lot of information to try and take in. Who thought 
the subject of finishing could have given us so much. But it really got me thinking about that balancing act. You know, we can't always hit that perfect scenario and we do have to make some compromises and we have to then adjust the parameters to suit that. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, we'd all love a, a perfect cutting condition, you know, when we're looking at parts, but we, you know, there's lots of things that we have to take into account. You know, and like you said, the collision, it's good that the software takes that uh, into account and we use that software to, to, you know, like move around with the tool and around that radius, but still trying to get the best out of the tool possible. Yeah, definitely. You've certainly given me some good thoughts and I'm going to probably change the, dramatically the way I approach parts from now on. You know, I really appreciate the difference between pull and push and why it's so important to keep that material away from that center of the tool. Well, with that, we do wrap up this series um, where we've been showing the machining of our titanium component. I've definitely learned some things away with the, with the help of Ben from Sandvik Coroman and hopefully you have at home too. We've mainly looked at how the integration of our two companies is going to benefit yourselves. You now have a, a tangible benefit. You can actually take this Coro Plus tool guide, utilize it in your machine shops to make sure you choose the correct tool for the application and you get the best cutting data for you to start your optimization process. So again, a big thank you to, to Ben and also the extended team that have been working us behind the scenes. We'd like to thank everyone involved. We really hope you found this useful and please stay tuned because we're going to be doing lots more collaborative projects in the future. And don't forget all the information down below of where you can find out more about Sandvik Coromance products and the Fusion 360 package. So until next time, see you all again soon.